Hello, listeners. Welcome back to the Whatcom Dads podcast. I'm Nathan Dwyer. I'm Nick Hayes, filling in for Mark Bagley. And I'm Chris Roselli, and welcome to our Back to School episode where we are going to have an opportunity to interview an elementary school principal right here in the city of Bellingham. Nick, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. It made sense to have Nick on because he was going to be our guest anyway, and so we thought, well, he's a Whatcom dad. Let's uh, bring him on as a substitute co-host. I love it. Welcome, Nick. Thank you. So, Nick, tell the listeners about your family and your kids and what you do when you're not being a parent. All right. So, I have two kids. They are Keaton and Addie. Keaton is 12. He's uh, going to be a seventh grader at Fairhaven Middle School. Addie is nine, and she is going to be a fourth grader at Silver Beach, where my lovely wife, Angela, teaches fifth grade. Um, And I am the principal at Happy Valley Elementary here in Bellingham. Before that, I worked down in the Burlington Edison School District. I was a high school math teacher. I was a um, district-wide math coordinator. And then I was a elementary school principal down there as well. So for back to school, you and your wife just have this whole thing figured out, right? Just it comes (laughs) around every year and you guys get back into the swing of things at your jobs and the kids just kind of take care of themselves, right? (laughs) No. In fact, uh, I think it was maybe July 28th when we woke up and we were on vacation. We were with Angela's parents on their boat. And when she woke up, she said, oh, I just had my first back to school dream. Oh, no. (laughs) Did she call it a dream or a nightmare? Uh, This this one wasn't too bad, but it was funny because it was about her colleague coming up with a really great idea for how to run a morning circle. So that's kind of how our our ramp up to school goes is that we start dreaming about it. Still get nervous every year. It's, yeah. Amy calls it the S word. We are not allowed to use the S word in our household until like the week before school happens. Mm. Yeah, Yeah, you you mentioned that last time, and I thought that was a good idea. (laughs) Uh, So do you ever slip up? And if so, what's the appropriate punishment? Oh, she quickly is like, ah, 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 nope, nope, nope. That's, That's not happening yet. We are still in summer. We're still in summer. So, yeah, back to school shopping is now starting to happen. And it's like, like Angela and like you, I mean, she's starting to think heavily about it. And of course is having her, her little back to school nightmares as well. Well, and listeners, if you're just uh, tuning in, maybe for the first time, uh, I have three kids. I have a seven year old who's going to be a second grader. I have a five year old who's going to start kindergarten and a three year old who is going to start preschool. (laughs) So for the first time, at least a couple days a week, all the kids will be in some sort of educational environment. So, Oh, my gosh. That's awesome. Yeah, and I have uh, two daughters, Lexi, who is uh, 15, who will be a sophomore at Squalicum High School, and Alyssa is going to be a seventh grader at Colshin Middle School. Well, one of you brought up back-to-school shopping, so that's a good segue to talk a little bit about that. Uh, I am in charge of that in our house, which I think might be a little bit of a gender swap yeah, totally. from, from typical. I don't particularly mind doing it, um, and so I've just sort of adopted that. So this upcoming Saturday, I have to take an incoming kindergartner, an incoming second grader out and find some clothes for them. I used to enjoy going. I still enjoy going. But now that the girls are older, they really don't have that much interest in dad coming along with them. And it has become a tradition where Amy and the girls go. The girls, uh, for years, get – it's this tradition where they get super goofy in the dressing room. Mm -hmm. And it's just this hilarious time where they just have a really good time together. And so – that's now a special thing just for Amy and the girls when they when they want to go do that. And the other thing is, is now that they're also older too, is um, the importance of breaking apart. And I'll take one of the mm-hmm. one of my I'll take Alyssa and Lex, Amy will take Lexi and we'll do some individuals back to school shopping and sort of just spend a little one on one time together too. Yeah, uh, you know, Angela, we're definitely more gendered than you are, Nathan, in, <laughs> in handling this, but. Uh, for a couple of years now, Angela and I have gone together back to school shopping for the two of us. And then we'll also pick things out for the kids. Addie enjoys to shop and Keaton would rather do <laughs> anything else anything other else. than go shopping. And so all we have to do is get him a couple Nike t-shirts and some shorts and sweats. And he's totally, <clears throat> totally set this year. 
I think I just finished back to school shopping for myself at Sierra Trading Post. Oh, great! Like, just really? I got these Nike dry fit pants that I'm wearing right now. Um, a couple, you know, nice flannels, and I'm feeling pretty set. Go. And Addie was able to find a few things for herself, so. I'm, I'm putting that on our list for Saturday. I thank, would check it out. Thank you, Nick. I don't know if I've actually been there. Yeah. It's right where the old Costco was. Yeah. yeah. And it's, um, I, this might be disparaging to Sierra Trading, but it sort of like seems to me like an REI, but maybe with some of the things that have a, a minor imperfection. Is that your sense, Nick? Absolutely. Actually, when I was shopping there, I was thinking it's like the... REI of the TJ Maxx world. Yes, that is a perfect, <laughs> that sounds perfect awesome. analogy. It is awesome, and it's actually really organized. Yeah, because sometimes a TJ Maxx looks like a bomb went off in there, right? Yeah, every Ross, time. There's oh, stuff every time. everywhere, on the floor, yeah. tags. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, a place that I tend to take the kids is Dick's Sporting Goods. Yeah, um, same. I think that they're... Their line, whatever it is, the Dick's line, is pretty reasonably priced and, you know... DSG. DSG. Um, so I think that's going to be one of our stops. <laughs> Very original. <laughs> what does that stand for? <laughs> hmm. Listeners, if you know. Any listeners out there are familiar with the Dick's Sporting Goods. Um, but it's kind of one-stop shopping because you can get jackets, you can get shorts, you can get shirts, you can get shoes... How about online shopping? Do you or your wives have a particular website that maybe is another spot to get uh, school clothes for the kids? Yeah, there's one we found just recently. Um, I don't know if you've heard of it. It's called Amazon. Um, that that so, one I've heard of. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a pretty good website. They seem to have a lot of good things to pick from. So. I, I think it's so profitable that their owner can just fly to space. <laughs> I've heard. <laughs> I've heard. I think it'll be big. I think it's going to be big one of these days. Yeah, we, uh, Angela, also... Uh, shops from a store that's pretty under the radar, Nordstrom Rack. Yes. <laughs> I would say... That's addicting. That pl- that app is a very addicting app. It is. And um, she's great at it. She gets great deals. She you know, accumulates her points. And I would say that for the next four to six weeks, we'll get something from Nordstrom Rack every three to four days. <laughs> yeah. The uh, delivery person is just kind of like, oh, it's oh, you guys okay. again. But free returns? <laughs> Why hey. not? Yeah, the girls, you know, we, we are still big fans of Old Navy just because mm. it's so affordable, um, especially because they're still growing, especially Alyssa. Um, and uh, what was the other one Lexi had mentioned? Oh, Target. Mm. Yeah. That's and right. the other one is Target. Yeah. Lexi, yep. Lexi and Alyssa and Amy, all three of them are big fans of Target. Yeah. For Keaton, it's the Nike outlet down in Burlington. Oh, there we you can go. can get his soccer cleats. We can get his... Soccer gear, we can get a school gear. There's one more website my wife uh, told me to mention. Uh, primary.com has, uh, I believe, probably younger kids' clothes. But mm. the thing that she likes about it is no logos, no words, just sort of stripes and colors and huh. checks and things like that. So uh, Dwyer Family Recommendation would be check out uh, primary.com. They're not a sponsor. They've never sent us anything. Feel free to if you'd like to, primary.com. But uh, just as Dix and Fred Meyer and Target and all these places we've mentioned, please feel free to shower us with uh, your goods and we, yeah. can, we can review them for you. Do they have like middle.com and secondary.com? I would not go to adult.com. I'm sure that that would not be. Uh, Search that. Yeah, but, can you just Google that real quick? Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> we, uh, we also, when the kids were s- smaller, used we 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 ones reruns. Oh yeah, yes. apparently hard to say, um, and that was great because they're going through clothes so quickly, mm-hmm. and that, we got lots of great stuff there, and they actually give really decent prices for the yeah. stuff you bring in. Right. My wife has adopted this theory is if I bring in stuff and I just immediately use my credit to buy stuff, it's as if I didn't. Uh, pay anything yeah that's a good point and amy and the girls are big fans of labels too they i mean found some really great things there all right listeners hopefully that helps a little bit as you get your kids suited up for back to school your life can change in an instant car accidents impact all aspects of your life and lead to pain and suffering medical bills and time missed from work robinson and cole attorneys in bellingham can help They have represented thousands of clients since 1979. They also handle other types of injury claims, including workers' compensation. Consultations are always free and are available in Spanish. Robinson & Cole, when you need us. 
we will be here. Chris, I remember in episode 30, you and I and Mark went to a Mariners baseball game. Oh, that was fun. And as part of that episode, we talked about our favorite all-time ball players. Yep. I remember that. Remind the listeners who your favorite all-time ball player is. At bat, number 11, Edgar Martinez, as exactly Tom Hudler would say it. I have a Edgar Martinez story for you. Okay, I can't wait. If you may have seen in the news, there was an Edgar Martinez statue unveiled Yes. at Team L2. <laughs> an Edgar Martinez statue unveiled at T-Mobile Park last week. That's right. And my wife and her sister happened to be attending that game. And as they were pulling into the parking lot, what car pulls up across from them? No way. But one Edgar Martinez. Now, do you know what the road is called that runs there uh, perpendicular to First Avenue? Edgar Martinez Way or Drive? One of the two. One of the two. So they have this this (laughs) encounter... With Edgar, and they yell at him, which, as you know, Mariners fans, one would do. But Edgar is apparently trying to make an illegal U turn or go the wrong <laughs> way against traffic. And the police officer who's directing traffic says, quote, You know what? The street's named after you. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> so uh, that's, that's, cool. that's your guy. Uh, I know that he also threw out the first pitch that day. So that's uh, cool. So, guys, I took my kids on a road trip this past weekend without my wife. Wow, brave soul! So it was me, a seven-year-old, a five-year-old, and a three-year-old for a total of five hundred thirty miles. How many iPads? Zero iPads. Wow, wow. dad of the year Come right on, now, man. 265 miles each way. And let's just say we had a couple hiccups along the way. (laughs) So what I thought would be fun is if I give you guys a little quiz and you can find out how my weekend road trip went. Now, my wife, she got the weekend off. We had planned this for several months. Coming out of COVID, it was like, you just take a weekend at home. I'll take the kids to see my parents. It was really one of those instances where if I can get through this, I'm pretty sure I can get through anything. Yeah. So, question one, it's a 265-mile trip. After how many miles did the first child request to stop for a bathroom break? Ten. Ooh, I was going to say Bo as well. I'll, I'll say Burlington, tw- 22 miles. 26 miles. Oh, <laughs> nice. Chris. And I think you referenced Bo, and there's a rest area there. Yeah. Yeah, we were a mile past the rest area. <laughs> They actually watch the sign go by, and they're like, and now. I need to go now. Second part of the question, on the way home, how many miles did we go before the first request for a restroom break? I'll go first this time. I, I, I'm guessing because of the request on the way down, you probably made it very clear that you needed that they needed to go before you left. So I'm going to say you got to Olympia. I'll say that's like 100 miles. Okay. 15 miles. 200 miles. Whoa! Way to go, kids. I made the request to stop. (laughs) (laughs) Which is so, like, you're just like, no, I don't want to have to get out and drag all the kids with me. So did did you drag them all into the bathroom with you? I mean, that's that's what we have 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 to to do, do. right? Yeah, totally. Both times, we stopped at a fast food type establishment to get a snack and to use the restroom. Mm -hmm. And both times, these establishments had made it very clear that the restrooms were closed. Oh. Now, if you have three kids and you look like a haggard dad on his own, you can meekly say, uh, four milkshakes, and can we please use your restroom? And, uh, they- and like, like the cop in Seattle with Edgar, they said, absolutely, you can do whatever you want. I'm so- all in. <laughs> all right. Next question. One of my children got hurt on the way down. Now, that's not even a quiz to see which one it is. Because if you've listened to the show at all, it's obvious that it's my five-year-old boy who got hurt. So my question is, how did he get hurt? Is it A, he slammed his finger in the door? Is it B, he tripped over a hose on his way to the bathroom? Is it C, he bumped heads with his sister? 
or D, he got hit in the face with the football we were tossing around during our break? See, I think this is a trick question. It's going to be all of those. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with classic road trip slammed his hand in the door. Chris? <laughs> uh, what was the second one? Oh, the trip's on the hose. It, that, that is something that when you're in a rush to get somewhere, you need to be somewhere, and then, yes, your kid trips on a hose. Chris, I, Chris is right. <laughs> Man, I feel like you gave Chris the answers. <laughs> And, and it was really one of those things that you see it in slow motion. Like, all right, everybody out of the car. We're going into the restroom. And then just slow-mo goes down. Big skinned elbow. Oh, no. Takes me forever to find the Band-Aids in the car. Um, That's why they let you use the bathroom. You had a kid who was also crying. Bleeding, yes. <laughs> all over their dining room floor. <laughs> yes, really, please. Yes, go to the bathroom. Get out of here. So by that point, we'd had the uh, restroom break just past the rest stop. Uh, we've had the uh, closed bathrooms. We've had the, the injury. And so the next question is, what serious XM radio station did I tune into to calm down when I both hit traffic mm-hmm. on a Friday and was dealing with these what we'll call minor setbacks individually, but collectively were a bit of a major setback. So did I tune it to 90s on 9, mm. Yacht Rock Radio, <laughs> E Street Radio, oh. or 24-7 Dave Matthews Band? I say, I say D, Dave Matthews. E Street. Yacht Rock Radio. <laughs> Hot Rock. Was Amy my, loves that station. I it, yeah. it was it got me to my calm place. <laughs> just which needed song, which song like took you there? Uh, probably some Doobie Brothers. Yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> as like you see red lights in front of you for miles and miles. Yeah. It's like I need <laughs> that falsetto kicks in. You're yeah. Like, I'm, I'm actually Michael fine. McDonald just like, got me got me where <laughs> I needed to go. I had a wonderful time with my kids. And again, I feel like if I could do that road trip with them solo. You can do anything. I can do anything. And it gives me a lot more uh, appreciation for what my wife does day in and day out. Well, we are very happy to have not only Nick Hayes as our co-host today, but he's also the gentleman we're going to interview today for the podcast Nick Hayes is the principal for Happy Valley Elementary, who uh, is going to fill us in a little bit about back to school, some things that we can be prepared for, especially during uh, the changes of uh, this year due to the pandemic, and uh, some other tips that might be helpful for us as we get ready for the school year. Nick, thanks so much for being here with us. It's good to see you, man. Happy to be here. It's really good to see you guys. And I just got passed a note from our legal department, and uh, <laughs> it, the note says, Nick is appearing today to share his own personal opinions, uh, not the opinions of the Bellingham School District. So uh, keep that in mind as we, as we learn from him. <laughs> so Nick, we've all gone to school with principals, but I really want to know, how do you spend a typical day? How much of your day is admin work how much of your day is observing teachers in the classroom and how much of your day is just playing tetherball with the kids yeah one of the things uh, that i learned early on is uh, you you know in any job you're going to create a schedule for yourself and you're going to have an idea of how those things are going to break down but the thing about the principalship is it's great for those of us with mild adult adhd because i might say today at 8.30, I'm going to go ahead and head into a teacher's classroom, and I'm going to do an observation of the math lesson that we talked about yesterday. And then at 8.47, I get a call from the office that I need to go to another classroom to take care of something. And and that something might be, you know, a kid just got sick on the floor, you know, this kid who's crying in the corner and they need to go to recess. Uh, And then, you know, from there, you might take care of that problem. And then you find out that one of your recess supervisors needs to go home. So you've got to go supervise some recess. And so the day's sort of unfolds. And so like if I were to break the day down, I get to work usually around seven and from seven to seven thirty, I'm typically just trying to check in, see if there's any email that's super urgent. Do we need any sub coverage? Um, around seven thirty, kids start trickling in, adults are there. And so I'm just checking in with people, just cruising around. And then from eight o'clock when school starts until two thirty, when it ends, you're just hanging on. 
Just triage the whole time. <laughs> Hanging on. Just juggling. Yeah. Do, you know, do, and, do, 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 do. and like I said, there is 100% of schedule. Like I have in my mind what I want to accomplish on that particular day. You know, teacher observations is a big part of our job. And supporting the work, work of quality teaching and learning is huge. Uh, making sure that our teachers have what they need and that the environments are set up right. Um, student services. Um, you know, a lot of people use the word discipline. I like to use the word student services because what we're doing is just supporting um, trying to help kids make it through the day. Um, you know, all of that then has follow-up communication with parents. And so there's the communication. And then, you know, you said playing tetherball and playing with the kids, I think is huge. One of the things that I want to role model for staff is that our, our job is fun. I mean, it's hard. There's times when I want to cry at work. There's times when I get angry at work. And at the end of the day, I'm an elementary school principal. I get to hang out with 450 kids all day and 80 adults who love kids. So we got to model that play as well. That's great. That's great. That's a lot more than I thought. I, I honestly thought it was mostly tetherball all day. It, so. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so uh, COVID. Um, generally, you know, what is elementary school going to look like in your building at Happy Valley this year and perhaps other schools too? Um, whether it has to do with masks or distancing, obviously things are always changing with this pandemic. Give people an idea perhaps of what's to come. Yeah. So I think the, the best news is that in and amongst everything that we're hearing about Delta variants and increasing case counts and, you know, kids getting COVID, like we are going to be in school from eight to two thirty Monday through Friday, right? What we have to do to mitigate the spread of COVID is a whole different story. And those are the things that we'll be figuring out. Uh, we know right now that we're going to be wearing masks. So if we're inside a school building, um, anybody who's inside vaccinated, unvaccinated has a mask on in the classroom. You're going to see what looks like a pretty normal classroom with kids and teachers wearing masks. Um, they're talking about three foot distancing where possible. You know, we're looking at things like in music class last year, kids couldn't sing um, because right. that was considered to be a way that you're just like spreading, spewing everywhere. out virus. <laughs> right. Um, this year they're talking about allowing kids to sing with masks on. Cool. Um, they're talking about using maybe a different mask for singing. And that's something that the district would provide. Um, but again, as I have these conversations and I mean, we've already had two, rather lengthy meetings as elementary principals talking through some of this. Uh, I just keep going back to 8 to 2.30 Monday through Friday. Sounds great to me. <laughs> well, we In really, person. We really person. appreciate the level of care that uh, the district and administrators such as yourself put into this because it is still a little bit scary to, to throw the kids back into these uh, classrooms. Yeah. yeah, yeah. One thing I think about when I hear the word principal is going to the principal's office. <laughs> Did you ever go to the principal's office? Yes. It wasn't my fault. I want, I want to know, what was you, it? Wait, can I just pause there for a minute and <laughs> How just you reflect on the number of times that a kid shows up in my office and says, <laughs> it wasn't my fault. So my question, Nick, really is, is going to the principal's office still a thing? Does it hold as much weight as it used to? And if not, sort of what... Um, better things have we come up with as educators than just the threat of you're going to the principal's office? Uh, it It is still a thing. I mean, I still have kids come to my office and we have, you know, a lot of, a lot of times kids are coming to my office because they might just need a space to calm down or decompress. But there are times when we need to have hard conversations about some, um, some of the choices that they've made uh, for better or worse. And, you know, that might be inviting them in if we need to have a conversation that includes their parent, you know, I'll get their parents on speakerphone. But I remember when I first became a principal, this was down at Lucille and Barger in Burlington. And there was a staff member who was frustrated with some kids. Like, you just need to take them into your office and scare them. And I just stopped and I was like, I am never, ever going to position myself to where I want to scare kids. And so I think that that notion of going to the principal's office was that like the role of the principal was to be scary so that when yeah. I show up, everyone's like, ooh. <laughs> and that still happens, you know, certain, much more when I walk into a fifth grade classroom and I, you know, walk in and, you know, say, you know, hey, Nathan, I, I need you to come with me. It's ooh. <laughs> right. And they don't know. I mean, then I'll bring you down to my office and be like, hey, your mom dropped your lunch off anyways. Have a great day. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, and um, 
on the other side of that is that there will be staff and adults who will feel frustrated because they'll see kids who they perceived as misbehaving. And so maybe they saw a kid who was, um, you know, maybe showing signs of physical aggression or, you know, property destruction throughout the building. And then they'll walk by my office and they'll see them in their coloring or maybe playing with Legos or something like that. And, you know, the conversation that we have is like, you know, we need to get this kid back to a place where they can repair that. Right, like I, ca- I can't take that kid who is in the red. They're angry enough to hurt somebody or break things, and just like shake my finger at them and shout them into compliance. That never has worked, and it still doesn't. Right, and so what we find is that we take a lot more time to find that calm place. Right, we throw on the yacht rock. Yes, um, we, we figure <laughs> out what's going to bring us out of the I, red. I prefer Enya. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> You know, but in all seriousness, we're tr- we're trying to help those kids calm down so that they can make the repairs that are necessary. Whether that's repairs with a classmate, whether that's you know going to a space where they might have broken something and helping to clean it up. Um, but that's not going to happen when the kid's angry. And so I feel like that's a lot of what we do in the principal's office now. Um, is I mean, to overuse a term, just mindfulness, just getting ourselves centered, getting ourselves back to where um, we can go forth with our day and, and re-enter into the school productively. So follow up then, how has being a principal impacted your being a parent as far as when those things come up at home? Are you as uh, able to pull out of your toolbox when it's your own kid? No, <laughs> no. And I, I, I apologize. Like I, I will raise my voice at my kids and then I will apologize to them. And they've become sort of accustomed to this cycle. And, and that's one of the things that Angela and I talk about. She is, she is much better at maintaining her, you know, professional educator demeanor with her, with our kids than I am. And as we've talked about on this show many times, as long as you know what you should be doing, even when you make the mistake (laughs) and you repair it with your kid and you learn from it. But yeah, I mean, just a week ago at our house, we had the like yelling at the kids, stop yelling. And then... (laughs) We looked at each other and we were like, wait a minute, like that doesn't make any that's sense. going to work. You know what's, uh, so in terms of the taking my job home, the place that I struggle the most is in um, showing up with presents for Angela. Like I can, I can usually maintain it for the kids, but then, you know, she knows what I do and she knows that a big part of my job, I didn't really talk about this that much, is supporting adults and, and counseling adults through hard situations, helping them problem solve, you know, taking on you know, what, what it is they're feeling in that moment and, and working through and staying calm and staying present and being a listener. And, um, and I need to get better at that for her. So we've talked a little bit about, uh, the kids, of course, but, uh, let's talk a little bit about the parents, Nick. Um, what, what's some advice that you could give parents, uh, or guardians of kindergartners, uh, especially if this is their first kid going to school? Yeah. So one of the, one of the phrases that we use in Bellingham and it's probably used in other places is that the kids don't need to be ready for school. We need to be ready for the kids. And so one of the things that we often encourage parents to understand is just love your kid exactly how they are the day that you bring them to us, right? There is nothing wrong with them. They're not ahead. They're not behind. They are just who they are in that particular moment. And they're going to grow from there. And that level of growth is going to look different for every kid. Um, but that doesn't, you know, I, th- I think that helping helping pull yourself out of that competitive mindset of I need yeah. my kid to be at this particular phase. I need my kid to be here. Now your kid's right where they need to be. Right? And we're going to support them right where they need to be. And so I think the peace of mind is that what we tell ourselves in the Bellingham School District every day is that it's our job to be prepared for the kids. It's not the kid's job to be prepared for us. And if if something goes wrong, we take that personally and we have to figure out how to fix it. And we're going to do that in partnership with the parents. And I think the other part, you know, like reading is huge, right? Like parents want their kids to read. The biggest thing that you can do to help your kids want to read is get them interested in reading by reading them interesting things. You know, kindergartners, as they learn to read, can't read very interesting things. What <laughs> kindergartners read is frankly incredibly boring, but adults can read them really interesting things that help them understand, like, I want to be able to do that too. So read to your kids. 
Well, this has been great. I want to close with a little question about uh, communication. Yeah. If we've got listeners out there who are wondering when's an appropriate time to reach out to the principal, at what point do they kind of escalate it and get you involved? And then second part of that, if there are any questions that you get over and over again that you just want to answer now on the podcast, uh, feel free to throw out some of those frequently asked questions. Yeah, so I think with the communication piece, whenever you feel like you want to talk to the principal, go talk to the principal. I mean, worst case scenario, our conversation might be about how we're going to involve the teacher in this conversation. Um, you know, but I never turn people away. Um, I always want the teachers to know if we're talking about something that's that's prudent and pertinent to them. But oftentimes, you know, parents need a safer place than their kid's teacher and they'll get really emotional with the teacher and they might not be able to present as their best selves. And so that's part of what I'm there for, part of what all his principals are there for. Um, what was the second part of the question? What are some frequently asked uh, questions frequently that asked you might want to just uh, get out there now or some misinformation that sometimes is spreading? And I, this is less a question than like a something that I feel when I'm talking to people is they think that I've made decisions around what's happening with like COVID protocols and things like that. It's above your pay grade. It's above Dr. Baker's pay grade. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, none of us are medical professionals, right? Like we can all, we can all speak like we have some background in it at this point in time. But at the end of the day, all I'm doing is following what I've been told to do. Yeah. Um, you know, and so I think that most people are starting to understand that. And so they just, you know, pepper the superintendent with the questions, um, you know, who now gets to just say, go talk to Governor Inslee. Um, sure. Which is real easy to do. I think, it's super days. easy to do. I mean, I'm sure his inbox, he's probably just in there all the time. <laughs> well, I, I have a good friend who's a teacher and, and he has said to us as our kids have started school, make sure you know that if you don't advocate for your kid, who is? I think that's, that's an amazing point, Nathan. And that's something that I talk to parents about a lot. Um, you know, like parents might feel like they're asking too many questions. They might feel like they worded something incorrectly or used a tone of voice that they're not proud of. And I'm like, you're your kid's advocate. I don't care how many questions you ask, how you ask them, the words you choose. I mean, you're here because you love your kid. And so showing up is demonstrating that love. And all of us have different strengths in terms of communication. Yeah, that's great. We view it as a partnership with, yeah. our, with our teachers. It's, it's, it's not us or them it's it's really us together how we can together do the best for our kids absolutely yeah so nick uh one of the things we really enjoy doing on this podcast is we like to interview our candidates with rapid fire questions great that we'll throw at you are you ready i believe i am okay here we go rapid fire question number one what is the best hot lunch that your school serves fettuccine alfredo with chicken (laughs) what is the most popular recess game at your school Four square. Worst name you've been called by a student. Can't say it. <laughs> Kids in your elementary school are most into what TV show or video game? What was that one about the aliens last year? Among Us. Oh, that, yeah. one, yeah, that one blew up last year. Yeah, yeah, that's that's super popular. What would you tell parents is the most important characteristic of a child who is doing well in school? curiosity well nick this has been great thank you for putting up with our questions thank you for sharing your insights um best of luck to you in the upcoming school year it sounds like the uh parents and children at happy valley are in good hands oh thanks appreciate it go happy valley hornets All right, for Whatcom Dads Recommend, we are going to talk about school lunches. Again, Mm -hmm. this is on the horizon. Get your lunch boxes out. Get your ice packs frozen. But, you know, we were thinking everybody can make a sandwich. But could we come up with some ideas for parents of some things to put in their lunchbox that might be a little more creative? All right, so do you guys have any ideas of some things that you like to pack in a lunch for your kids that might be a little outside the traditional box? We, ah, this might not be what you're thinking of, but we do like the at-home lunchable. Yes. So what we'll do is we'll like, you know, cut up like a pile of carrots and peppers and cucumbers, and then we'll get the turkey and salami out and then cut up some cheese. And then we'll, we have those like boxes with the compartments. And then oh, we'll yeah. Set the kids up with four boxes 
and all that stuff, and we let them just go to town building their lunches for the week. That's fantastic. That's a good idea. Um, we actually have like a checklist. It has to have a main. It has to have a fruit. It has to have a veggie. And then we have a whole selection of things that they pick from because they start losing ideas pretty quickly. Um, like but by one October. That, huh? Yeah, right. <laughs> Week two. So what, what Alyssa loves, of course, is mac and cheese. And so there's that, that container, right, that keeps the food warm. So it can be rice. It can be mac and cheese. It can be a soup of some sort that they like. So – Alyssa definitely, definitely uses that as one of her main key ingredients. Yeah, mac and cheese was on my list. Just toss it in that thermos. It stays relatively warm. <laughs> I mean, and again, sometimes they're eating pretty early in the day. Yeah. Um, but you can toss in chicken noodle soup or something in there as well. Yep, yep. We see kids um, who have sushi in their lunches. Wow. Yeah, like, and and they'll just be, like, it's not actual sushi. It's just the... The nori wrappers with rice and veggies in it. Yeah, they're not bringing in eel or anything. <laughs> they don't. They don't have like uh, yeah, salmon nigiri <laughs> in a rainbow roll. If they did, that would be impressive. That'd be legit. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Oh my gosh, I you know I um uh will make the kids a sandwich which will be like turkey and one of the sort of dad things I do is is I always slice the cheese too thick mm. so it's become a thing actually so whenever I make them a sandwich there's always <laughs> you exaggerated on purpose now <laughs> yeah. it's like a quarter inch slice of cheddar <laughs> pretty close actually yeah. yes it's it's uh, which is pretty darn fun to do too so you know I remember when my mom used to put something special in my lunches every once in a while and so if if my kid opens up their lunch and and there's a quarter inch piece of cheddar in there that makes them laugh and think about home then then i've done something good yes a note can go a long way in a yeah, school lunch as well too. for a kid yeah um my daughter also loves a bagel and cream cheese not quite a sandwich speaking of notes i i do appreciate and i don't know if parents think this is what's going to happen or not but they'll like it'll be a parent of a kindergartner who will put a handwritten note for their kindergartner in the lunch that says something like I love you and hope you have a great day. And they yeah. can't read it. They have no idea what it says. <laughs> they cannot read it. Right. So then inevitably, like, you know, an adult. Kind of, and it's great. What I think, I hope this is what the parents think happens is they're like, can you read this to me? And then as a school staff member comes over and we'll read them this note from their kids. So it, it turns out cool. But I always wonder in my head, like, who are they writing this for? Do they think that the kid can read this? Well, listeners, hopefully a few other ideas to get those school lunches packed and get your kids out the door with a, a healthy and maybe a little bit creative lunch. Right. Special thanks to our guest and co-host today, Nick Hayes. And as always, thanks to our sponsor, Robinson and Cole Attorneys. Appreciate you guys having me. You can reach the show at Facebook or Whatcom Dads Podcast at gmail.com. And check us out next week on the Walk'em Dads podcast as we get an opportunity to interview a stay-at-home dad. Dad. So, uh, I got three jokes for you. Great. Two short jokes and a long joke. Okay. Joke, joke, joke. Ah. That's a good one. That is not... That is not a good one. That's, that's it's awful. a dad joke. None that's of them terrible. are good. None of them are good. That's the rule. <laughs> he's never oh, you invited. probably, he's you never probably invited. like that. You like that one about the pizza, don't you? Or is <laughs> that, one's is that one's too cheesy for you? Oh, yeah. See, that's better. I like that one better. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or the one about the ceiling. You, oh, that one <laughs> went over, over your, your head, head, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, do you guys know anyone who needs an arc? Because I know a guy. <laughs> Yeah. That's a good one. That's a good one. What do sprinters eat before a race? Nothing. They fast. <laughs> and next week, we will interview... Uh... <laughs> See what I have to put up with, Nick. Is this every time? Every time. Oh, my God. How do you do this? <laughs> the... Uh... Does he ever start breathing again? Or just, just... Sometimes. I just... Okay. Oh, sorry. Right. Uh, oh, I'm tingly. Like, I'm about to pass out.